that time of year when we're all starting to get a little antsy to get out in the garden, especially on these nice warm days. And really, we've got a lot of cleanup to do. When we start cleaning up the garden, we often think about pruning and pruning our woody shrubs. There's a couple of things to keep in mind when you're looking and determining what to prune and when to prune it. And the big factor to consider is when that shrub might bloom. There are shrubs that bloom on what's called old wood, which is the wood from the previous season. And those flower buds start to develop last fall and then they'll be blooming early this spring. Some examples of the, uh, shrubs that bloom on old wood are forsythias, lilacs, and some hydrangeas. Now some shrubs, such as crepe myrtles, the spitex behind us, and, and others will bloom on what's called new wood. So again, roses is another example of something that blooms on new wood. On these plants, you want to go ahead and prune them in late winter, early spring. So around that February, March time frame, you want to start pruning these. The flowers will develop on the new growth that comes out that spring. So we're going to go ahead and prune this back, get our shape back and maintain the structure that we want underneath here, the architectural structure of this plant. You can see we've got a lot of suckering that's happening. We want to sort of maintain that tree form. Now there's a couple of different ways of doing this and one is to go ahead and if you wanted to control the height of it because these can get a little unruly like crepe myrtles, if you want to control it we could cut it all the way back to the ground. Also, if it ever has disease or uh, infection of insects or something like that, that's a good way to kind of, again, just uh, renew that plant. Now for this particular one, what we're going to do though is go ahead and keep some of these older branches, but you can see a lot of these suckers um, coming from the crown. We're going to go ahead and remove those. And that's sort of a thinning method in the fact that we're going to open up this canopy and allow for better air circulation. Now there, as I got in here, there is one branch, this particular branch here. It looks like a large branch, one that we would want to keep. Um, but upon closer inspection, it has a crack that pretty much goes about the length of 12 inches down the side of this. And that's only going to potentially open up um, disease and decay inside of this branch which could affect the overall plant. So while this is a larger branch, um, we're going to go ahead and remove it. And anytime you remove a larger portion, you want to remove that area first, um, just so that we can see how much total material we're going to be removing from the plant. removed that larger branch you can see we've lost a fair amount on this uh, right side of the canopy we're going to go ahead and leave this one we're going to leave this one and we're going to remove this actual other one that's fairly significant just because it faces directly into this larger shrub behind us we will leave this smaller one for the time being just to help fill in the space on the right here but the other suckers we're going to remove and then we're going to work on limbing this up a little bit more. When you're thinning as a form of pruning, you're making diligent cuts and you're making um, important cuts in order to improve the overall canopy of the plant. In some plants you're going to prune out the old growth and in some plants you're going to prune out the new growth. Now something to also keep in mind is in some cases you have water sprouts and these are often just the tall, straight, thin branches that grow. And the more I look at this, um, the more I don't like this whole, uh, whole branch either. So I'm actually going to remove this back to here. And that's the thing about pruning is there's not one right way to do it. Uh, it's important to step back away from that tree, evaluate it, and look at it overall and then come back in and prune again. The worst thing that you can do is get in here and be so focused and cut, 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 and then all of a sudden you step back and you've kind of uh, really taken off too much. So again, make those diligent cuts, step back, take a look. You can always cut more as you go through that process, but it's really hard to reattach any of those branches successfully. So after looking upon this, again, I'm going to go ahead and remove this interior branch further. So in this 
particular method when we were thinning, a lot of times we were either taking the branch back to the ground or we were going in and trimming back to a, another branch or another bud in order to redirect that growth outward. Now another method of pruning is called heading where you would really just take something and make a blunt cut. We did some of that on our um, Vitex behind us when we went to the ground. But on this spirea, again, this is another form of rejuvenative pruning. Um, a lot of times spireas will continue to grow. They're going to grow out from this older um, growth and be just fine. But it's another way of controlling the growth of it. So we're going to take this all the way back to the ground. So I've got some um, shears that we're just going to cut this back. A lot of times this is done in fruit trees, especially um, when you buy a new fruit uh, whip that might be five feet tall, you're going to head that back to about 18 inches in order to break, break those buds right there at that 18 inch height to develop that canopy. So there's a couple of different reasons why you might use that heading method. It's probably not the most common, as common as thinning is. You can see with this type of pruning, we've gone back and just really taken some blunt cuts um, indiscriminately taking these stems all the way back to the ground or to the crown. Unlike the thinning method that we did behind us where we were selectively pruning back to a branch or another bud to redirect that growth, this is, we're just not really paying attention to the buds that are going to be shooting out because we're basically rejuvenating this plant. It's going to flush out all new growth. Um, and we're going to have a nice shrub this spring. Now this is a spirea, um, and so this is a method that you can do. If we didn't prune it, if you didn't have time or you didn't get around to it, this will regrow, but it's going to get a little bit leggier and larger. Um, so this is again a, a way of maintaining that uh, habit. So that's what we're going to do on these, and we're going to go back and head all of these back. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.